Today we are finishing our summer series in Proverbs, and I gotta say, this might be to date uh, my most favorite series we've done, uh, just because it it was so great week after week, Sunday after Sunday, just to kind of hear what God's been teaching you in Proverbs. I'm actually really proud of us that we spent the time to read through the book, or at least you told me you did, you know, right? And we just have been learning together at all of this practical wisdom. And I, I, I think uh, I did a, Dennis, we always talk about this, but I did do a series uh, through the kind of the story of Samson. I do think that is first place. It was called Death by a Thousand Cuts. Um, but this, this easily wins the silver medal. I really did uh, enjoy this series. I'm very, very excited. And so kind of, I don't normally do this, but I kind of feel led to say, hey, here, here's what the rest of the year is going to look like. So here's kind of what I'm praying and thinking through. So uh, if you can, I don't know, get excited or maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe you'll be like, oh, well, we're not going to church that month. But this is kind of a, kind of what the, the rest of the year kind of series calendar will look like. So we're going to start um, a new series uh, next Sunday. Actually, unofficially, it'll kick off next Sunday with Chad Langford. He's got some stories from Spain. He's got some awesome stuff that he's going to share with us. Uh, we're, we're starting a series called Back at It Again, just kind of through some key discipleship disciplines, kind of key things I want us to work on as a church. Again, as this year has been uh, a year of healing, some key things I really sense the Holy Spirit saying we need to grow in these areas as we're all kind of either going back to school or it's the fall and God help us. I just pray for colder, easier weather. You guys survived this week. It was, remember that? Was it Friday where it was like Florida weather? It was like raining and overcast and 100 degrees. I just was praying the Lord just rapture, at least me, like take me home. The rest of them can stay. It was so bad. So anyways, uh, back at it again will be that series. Uh, And then we're going to do one, and I'm nervous, and you probably are. It's going to be called Let's Talk Politics, Uh, because I don't know if you know this, things be crazy out there. And uh, it's an election year. And so I kind of want to talk about our, our, our place in this world, but not of this world. And so the, the, the title is tongue in cheek, because obviously, like both legally, I believe in the separation of church and state. And that's more for us than for them. Uh, but we're going to talk about kind of our place in this fight uh, that I don't know, some of it should be our fight. But again, more on that in a little bit. And so I'm excited about that. And I feel like I've been teasing this series for years now, but I feel like it's now or never sort of thing but uh, I kind of want to do a 30,000 foot view uh, through the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, especially because we're finishing Proverbs and Ecclesiastes kind of feels like the natural like season two where everything gets super dark and you're like, what happened to this guy? And so um, I'm going to call that series Coffee with a Mad King because I feel like that's how the book of Ecclesiastes reads. Like we're hanging out with King Solomon and he's like just venting about his depressed life and then he like leaves for a cup of coffee or second cup and then comes back and completely changes the subject like oh and another thing so that, that's kind of what I feel like Ecclesiastes reads so I'm I've been working on that series for a while um, so let, we'll find out the, the, the idea is October because um, it's you know the spooky month we're all going to be like oh life is so meaningless what is all and it also would help us for you know come November 5th uh, and then the idea is you know kind of there's there's a bit of a of a hinge point in the book of Ecclesiastes where he looks back and goes like you know what this is this is what I've learned and this is how I've wasted my life and so I'm hoping as November comes uh, we'll have a bit of thankfulness a bit of reflection so that's the heart and then of course our Advent series in December will be called there's no place like hope and I'm working on that one too excited for that. So you guys ready to finish up Proverbs? I'm, I'm really happy. Um, I, I, I will say this. Please continue to read the book. I said this nine weeks ago that I, I hope this isn't, oh cool, that was a fun summer series, but I'm hoping it's kind of a rhythm of your walk with God to read through the book of Proverbs to talk about the practical wisdom, especially because we didn't, I mean, I could have gone for, I don't know, another month and I'm like, okay, we got to move on. Like, you know, there's, there's so many topics we didn't talk about. I will say in particular, uh, Proverbs 30, in Proverbs 31, which just topics I just felt from the Lord like, ah, oh, we just did a series kind of on these topics, and so I'm not saying it's not good. I just felt like it's okay for us to move on, but I hope we don't, as a people, move on from the book of Proverbs. Does that make sense? So I promised you I would recap. So if you haven't been paying attention the last uh, two months, you're welcome. I'll kind of give you some spark notes, uh, bullet points. But here, here's what we've learned in this summer to Garrett, to Garrett, to Garrett, together in the book of Proverbs. Uh, the first thing we talked about week one of this series is this, that Proverbs is a person. 
Jesus Christ. We talked about how the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We talked about how it's so easy to view Proverbs just like as a book of life hacks, but no, well, it's, it's the wisdom of what does it mean to know and follow and love Jesus. So it, it, we, it, and to get ahead of myself, I think Ecclesiastes proves us that. That we can have intellectual wisdom, but if a life is not filled with the love of God and obedience, all is vanity. And so wisdom, again, is not just a, like, like, a, like a hack or a principle, it's a person, Jesus Christ. We also talked about, if you guys remember week two, we talked about how direction is greater than intention. Uh, and we talked about how I, I am continually to this day directionally challenged. Actually, we, uh, we used the, <laughs> this was literally last night, 10 o'clock, I was uh, leaving uh, the church, and I just was in, you know, in my head listening to a podcast, and we used the Life360 app. Has anyone ever used the Life360 app to kind of, so we use that, and so Kristen can see where I'm at at all times, and she can see, you know, and vice versa, <laughs> and so uh, I made a wrong turn to go home, and so she just starts texting me, like, should have been a right. I'm like, what? She's like, you made a wrong turn, and so, so then just to be a punk, I just kept making more wrong turns. I'm like, okay, fine. I'm going to Santa Maria, you know? And she's like, where are you going? I'm like, ha, ha, ha. So anyways, I don't know where I'm going when it comes to driving, but I hope I'm continually growing where, knowing where I'm going when it comes to my walk with Jesus. We talked about, it was my intention to go home, but my direction is greater than intention. Do you remember this? We talked about the principle of the path, right? There's the, there's the path of the righteous. There's the path of the wicked. There's the path of the wise, and there's the path of fools. And we can say, God bless me, and oh, but he knows my heart. But again, direction is greater than intention. We talked about this. This was Father's Day. We talked about what does God want to build in our home? So yes, it was a message to the men, but it really was a message to all of us. And we talked about this. I know this is harsh, but that's what Proverbs is all about. We talked about how success outside the home does not justify failure within it. That so much, especially I think in our culture, we tell ourselves as, as kind of husbands and men that like, well, I, I, I provide by my paycheck. And we talked about, no, you're, you're so much more than a paycheck that the greatest gift you can give your family is the gift of you, not just what you do outside of the home. We talked about building a path for children, a path for life. We talked about building wisdom in our homes. I love this verse. I'll share it with you again. Proverbs 15, 17 says this, better a small serving of vegetables with love than a fattened calf with hatred. We talked about you might not have much on your dinner table, but if his presence is there, if his spirit is there, if the fruit of the spirit is evident in your home, then you are blessed. We talked about week four, that you can't live a wise life without wise friends. And I think kind of this post-2020 culture, people are scary, we've told ourselves. And also, we've all been hurt. We've all been kind of a relationship either go sour or, you know, we've all, especially in California, they moved away and they were my best friend. I don't really see them anymore. So we talked about that through the power of God that we are brave enough and we are strong enough and love is always worth the risk. The proverb shows, shows us that you, you can't live a life of isolation and live a wise life. No, you need to build your team, build your support, build wise friends and be a wise friend. Let me share with you Proverbs 27, 9. It says this, perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and the pleasantness of a friend springs from their heartfelt advice. We talked about wise words. How can we say the right thing? Because I don't think any of us are overtly evil and want to say the wrong thing on purpose, but we've all said the wrong thing. And Proverbs has a lot to say about the words that we say to others, to ourselves, right? About others behind their back. And so we, we talked about this, about wise words. What are wise words? Well, wise words are four different things. They are from the right person. You guys remember this? Talk about, is this your fight? Because sometimes you get involved in things you shouldn't get involved in. From the right person, in the right way, at the right time, and with the right people. Man, that's preaching to me all over again. That's good. I don't see people taking notes. You better be, this is a note-taking Sunday, friends. Right? Wise words are what? From the right person, in the right way, at the right time, and with the right people. We talked about uh, wise workers, a worshipful worker, that we would do everything, whether it's here, whether it's at home, whether it's at whatever your nine to five is, right? The work that God has placed before us, the callings, the ways in which we are uniquely wired. We don't want to do it just for a paycheck, though a paycheck is nice. We don't want to do it just to impress our friends, but I, I would say God wants godly people promoted and put in positions of power, but we do it for him. We talked about how worshipful workers, remember these three key things? Remember that Venn diagram that just kept 
getting more and more complex, uh, that we want to be smart, wise. This isn't IQ. This is kind of emotional intelligence. We want to be hungry to have a passion from the Lord for the work that he's given us. And we also want to be, be humble. We don't want to be, uh, you know, working for ego or working for accolades. We work for him. Do you guys remember? Nod with me. You remember? Because I could just go back through Evernote and re-preach that series. If you don't remember it, I'll save myself a son. Just kidding. So worshipful workers. We talked about, uh, in week seven, we talked about hurt. How do we handle the wounds? And, and if I can kind of summarize it for us, because it's, it, it's at least the part that resonated with me the most. We talked about this, that in life, they might have caused the hurt. It might have been their responsibility, right? They hurt you. That's their hopeful, repentant conversation with God. So they did the hurt. God gives the healing, but you do the work of daily obedience to, to get there. Do you remember that? We talked about that. It's so easy to just be frustrated and say, okay, that I'm staying where I'm at in bitterness, in uh, an unhealthy behavioral habitual pattern as if that proves something to the other person that hurts you. No, that God does the healing, but it takes us doing the work of going to therapy, of journaling, of praying, of crying, of wrestling, of weeping, right? Arguing even with God, of saying, why did this happen? But he Healing is available for us, but often it's a daily act of obedience when it comes to emotional wounds. And lastly, last week we talked about, um, remember we talked about the, the prosperity paradox, uh, these two kind of separate truths that are held in tension. And by the way, all week long I was frustrated with myself that I used the word tension because I don't, I'm sure you understood what I meant, but I, I kept thinking like, oh, that sounds like, ooh, the Bible, it hurts, and I, I don't want it to sound like that. So I want to change my message metaphor, retroactively. Is that okay? Uh, so, I, I, it, so it, okay, to explain, it was the yes and of it all, that we, when we give, when we live a generous life, that we are blessed. The Bible clearly says that. But we don't want to use God as a vending machine or a genie, like Dennis and I were talking about this week. Right, so it's a, it's a yes and. We don't give so that we get in return, but it's, it, it's again, tension. But here's, here, I want to cha change it, because um, tension sounds painful, but it's not. It's like a double blessing. It's a yes and. So, I want to say that uh, it's a double entree dinner. You know what I'm saying? It's the surf and the turf. You hear me, church? So yeah, that is the both end of it all. I actually kind of want to do a series, or maybe at least a Sunday, kind of on the paradoxes we see in the Bible. It's the, the yes and, like he's the lion and the lamb. He's, right, fully God, fully man. There's so much of those in the Bible, these, these yes ands of it all, that make hopefully our, our human brains kind of go, what? And may that stir forth worship. But anyways, that's for free, and that's going to have to be in January, because I just shared with you what the rest of the year is going to look like. So, all to say, uh, I want to share something with you, and then we're going to continue, or rather, not continue, we're going to end this series, as promised. I kind of want to recap with you today and talk a bit about, hey, what would the road ahead look like for you? And I want to share this with you. Um, this is very personal, by the way, and you're not allowed to read this. Uh, this, is, this is the road to awesome. And this was something that Kristen and I did uh, on our drive back right after we got married. Uh, for our honeymoon, uh, we drove her 1997 Nissan Altima from Springfield, Missouri to Atascadero, California. One out of 10 would not recommend. It broke down halfway over, or halfway here. But what we did in the car, we, we kind of talked and said, hey, let's, let's build our lives together. And we had all these questions and all these things about, you know, what are we wanted our life to be. And this is my copy and her copy. I would not even bring. It's just too personal. Um, but it was kind of fun. I was going through this actually last night and a bit this week about kind of what we wanted our lives to look like. And I wrote kind of some rules that I'm like, hey, this was still good from, you know, 12 years ago. Um, it says your life is a checkbook and you write a check every day. Uh, you must see the big picture, the macro, before the micro. Um, and to see all this, it takes faith, it takes imagination. And you know what's funny is this. I was looking through this, I'm like, wow, God, you've really blessed us. And then there's also some things in here that I'm like, thank God you didn't bless us like that. You know, so I wrote some notes. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny, just kind of just where we were in life. Uh, on both of mine and hers, our biggest dream was that we would get a washer and dryer, a dishwasher, and internet, because we didn't have any of those when we were newlyweds. And that was fine, you know? We, we filled our time. That was way inappropriate. I was talking about reading the Bible. What are you talking about? But that was our big dream. And in both of these, it was like, please give us a washer and dryer, a dishwasher, and internet. Uh, in mine, I said I wanted to start a family after five years of marriage. If you don't know, we, we, we got pregnant uh, four months after getting married. So 
I don't know, thank you, I guess. I'm just kidding. No, I'm so happy. But yeah, I was like, how about five years? Um, I said I wanted to be a lead pastor, and that's cool. Ended up happening. And there were so many, there were silly things too, I'll be honest. I, I, I was like, we're going to be in Seattle. And I'm not saying I never, ever wanted to leave you. I just, in my young, you know, 22 year old mind, I just thought Seattle was the hippest place in town or in the world. But anyways, I'm very thankful that we're not in Seattle. But it, it, you know, it's been, it's been a fun exercise to be like, God, you've, you've been so good to us. And, and so, but before I get too many credit from some of you guys, like, oh, you guys are so cute. Um, I, I say all that to say, it's real easy to do that when you're newlyweds, right? That's probably the easiest time in our lives it is. Let's dream, let's think, let's edit, right? Let's be creative about our future. I think it takes more boldness um, to do it after 10 years, which we've done, to say, hey, we need to, we need to figure this out. Um, I think it's even more wise when things aren't going well, right? When, when it's not just all butterflies and rainbows and it's just a blank canvas of what your life could be. It's an even wiser, godly, braver thing to say, can we take a moment because I, I, I want to dream again. I want to plan again. I want to focus up again and think about the path that we are on and, and maybe even is this the path that God would want us on Gosh, it got so quiet in here. Amen. Amen, Tina. So I want us all to have the boldness and the courage, regardless of your stage of life. I'm going to talk a lot about that. And of course, like my sermon is really like the stages of my life that I see. But I'm hoping that all of us today, through everything we've learned this summer, say, okay, God, what is the path forward? What would the road look like that we can plan, that we can dream? And again, it's so easy when you're young and you've been married for 48 hours, it's even harder to say, man, I'm in a unique season of life or we're empty nesters or we're in the middle of the chaos that is raising kids or I just got a new job or I just had a job shift or I'm in the middle of a sickness from the middle of, of just a conflict with an extended family member, whatever it may be, I would say I think you are strong enough by his spirit and I would ask that you would be brave to be obedient enough to say, God, what is the path ahead? I have some things for us as we conclude this series. Man, it got quiet in here. That's crazy. Uh, so again, we're going to have a wisdom audit, if you will. And the first thing you've already seen, the wise make a plan. Let me share with you what Proverbs says. Proverbs 16.3, it says this, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. I love that promise. And that's my heart. I hope that's your heart for your own life, that we want to commit what is on our heart, what God has placed before us. We are going to establish plans with the Lord and commit to him, not just live whatever feels good, right? It's so easy to just like, I just got to get through this week. I know we've all been there. You just nod with me as I'm saying this. I just got to get through this week. And then you're like, I just got to get through this month, right? And then you're like, I just got to get through this decade. Like we all have been there. And I know I got more life to be living, but I don't think it ever really slows down. Can I get a hearty amen? amen. Right? It's not like, God, I'll, I'll focus up when life gets easier. I don't think, have you read the book? I ain't getting easier. So today, may today be the day. God, I'm going to start to be more intentional about writing those daily checks of how I'm living my life. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Proverbs 27, or rather 21.5 says this, good planning, and say it with me, hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Again, children do whatever feels good. Immature people do whatever feels good. I don't care. Let's just go. I, I, don't, I don't care what the checkbook says. I don't care. I'm just, I'm just too exhausted to handle this. And we can do that for our entire lives. But the wise work hard. The wise plan. The wise continue forward. Again, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. But hasty shortcuts will lead to poverty. I want to show you as well that as you sit with the Lord and begin to journal. I don't know, you can use one, write on your computer, however you work. I do hope today is a homework-based sermon that you spend the rest of the week thinking about this with me. But I, I will say this, that planning clarifies priorities. As you begin to think these through, not just day after day, ah, oh, I just gotta get through the day, that if you begin to prayerfully plan with the Lord, 
it clarifies what you're about and maybe even more importantly, what you're not. It will clarify what your purpose is. Where has God placed you? What are your priorities? And to kind of help you think that through, here's the second thing. The wise see their season. We talk about that actually in three different ways, but the wise see the season of life that they are in. I love this. Proverbs 24 from the NLT says this. Those too lazy to plow, right, to work in the, say it with me, right season will have no food at harvest. That this was the time to work, to plow, to get the soil ready. But if you missed your season, then it's going to be an even harder season in the future. Does that make sense? It's blunt, but that's been Proverbs. Those that are too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food at time of harvest. Now here, I would say the next few verses, I think, are the meanest <laughs> part of Proverbs. Therefore, they are kind of secretly my favoritist part of Proverbs. And it's, it's the part about the sluggard. I'm sure if you've read it, you've read the sluggard. And I think this is so great. It just sounds like, you know, God through Solomon's like, all right, shut up, take a knee. Well, come on. Listen, it's so great. And so uh, every time uh, this is a, a super niche reference, but if you understand it, y'all's are my people. Um, the sluggard, every time I read that, I picture uh, there's a Rick and Morty episode where Beth and Jerry go to space counseling, and she makes a version of him that's just a worm that cries. It, just not if you understand. Anyone? 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 No? Okay, fine. Uh, so yeah, that's what I think. That's what I picture every time um, it says the sluggard. So it says this, Proverbs 6, 6 through 11, go to the ant. You sluggard, like, it's so harsh, like, ow, Proverbs. Yeah, it says, go, like, you think you have your life together? Let's talk about ants. Go to the ant, you sluggard, and consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in, hear it, summer, and gathers its food at harvest. It's saying, listen, those of you that are just, again, it's just, let's just get through it. I don't care. I don't want to plan. I don't want to work hard. I don't want to repent. I don't want to grow. He's saying, okay, let's go to the smallest thing, the ant. It doesn't have anyone telling it what to do. It doesn't have an overseer saying, hey, I need you to, you know, give me an expense report of what you've done this week. No, it just kind of day after day does the daily work and has plenty. And I love this. It gets even harsher. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? <laughs> <laughs> when will you get up from your sleep? Like, how did the Lord know I was napping? I'm tired, God. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And like, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, you could totally proof text that and say like, that's what the Lord wants from me, right? Just a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands and poverty will come over you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. You hear the principle, right? It's harsh, but it's true. You just be like, ah, I'm fine. I'll do that tomorrow. Just that I'll be a task for future Garrett. And if you live your whole life that, that what? You will be physically, financially, spiritually bankrupt. It says even the ant worships the Lord, glorifies his holy name by every day, walking in obedience, doing the work that it's been called to do. And so all of us have work that we've been called to do. So what season are you in? Again, I want to look at this at three different ways. What season are you in? Uh, first, I think there's a natural ebb and flow that's going to be different for every person, but again, I'll just talk about my life. Um, just in the natural ebb and flow of the calendar year. What season are you in? Kind of January through December. My life kind of looks like this. You know, there's New Year's, and so we'll have a new theme. You know, next year won't be year of healing. I already know what 2025 is going to be, but I'll wait until January. But I'm like, oh, I'm so excited for January. But it'll be New Year. It'll be excitement. We'll be starting new ministries, new optimism. So excited. And then we, we go into what we've always called the pre-Easter insanity. And I feel like it starts January 2nd for some reason, but we are all hands on deck. Super Bowl Sunday is coming and it's Easter. It's the pre-Easter and then we have Easter and then all the staff die and then there's another resurrection and we say, thank you, Jesus, right? Then I got birthdays. May is birthday, Kristen uh, and Matthew. We got a bunch of birthdays. Then we have the summer um, and I'm learning now as our kids are getting a bit older. Oh man, August 22nd, when my kids go back to Templeton schools, can't come soon enough. I'm so ready for it. Get out of my house. <laughs> it's just the summer. 
Then we have the fall, right? Then we have the winter, and then it's holiday insanity, both kind of Advent and Christmas stuff here. And then we always are like here to there to San Diego to Missouri to Colorado. Like it's just, it's, it's chaos. And so there's naturally kind of a calendar ebb and flow in your life. And so like I've learned, you know, like, hey, it's the summer. It's probably not the best opportunity. I'm just talking practically. Not the best opportunity for me like, hey, you know what? I'm going to start a 6 a.m. Bible study every single day. You guys with me? No, because my kids are up at 6 a.m. and they hungry. I can't just do that. It's just not the right season right now, right? Do you guys not really? Does it make sense? Just, there's kind of a natural kind of calendar. So what season are you in? Embrace that season. Don't fight that season, but ask God for you to be fruitful and faithful in this season. The next thing is this. Uh, what is the stage of life that you're in? Uh, again, this is kind of, this is all kind of just what I've been thinking through. So obviously, hopefully, I've, I've gone through childhood and young adult and work life. And so next is, you know, after that, we got married life and, and parenthood. And obviously, to state the obvious, I'm right there, smack dab in the middle of that. We got three kids, and they are so much, and I love them so much, but again, they are so much. And so that's our, that's our season right now. So that's where I'm at, and that's not going to change anytime soon. I don't want it to change anytime soon, but life's going to be different, so I have to, again, embrace this season, cherish it, because, gosh, every single empty nester here you tell me it, and it's like I don't really hear you. What do you hear when you get young kids? Cherish it. Because you'll blink, and they're gone. And for young parents, you're like, I'd love to blink so they can be gone, right? Like, you know, like, like that, we've all been there before. But I want to cherish it. I don't want to, but, but I know eventually we'll be empty nesters. And yeah, I love my kids, but I'm excited. I did the math. I won't be about 45 when they turn 18. You know, I'm so excited for that. 45, we had them so stinking young. Again, if five years was my plan, four months was the Lord's, you know, and Kristen. So, you know, so yeah, so we, uh, I'm going to be empty nesters and I'm really excited about that. Then of course, you know, I'll be a caretaker, and uh, not to overshare, but you know, I've been I've been having this conversation with my dad uh, the last couple of weeks as he's kind of entering a caretaker season. And it's been real precious with my father. Um, and just for free, parents, you never stop being a parent. I don't care what your kid says. You never stop being a parent. Does does the relationship change? Yes. But I pray by God's grace, you always um, have influence. And so we've been having these conversations about dad. What are you walking through, and how can I support you? How, 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 how are you weathering this? Because I'm going to be honest, Dad, and I'm very thankful that he's, he's had this conversation with me. I'm watching you because I, if God is so good, I'll, I'll be where you're at. So what will that conversation look like when it comes time for us to be your caregiver for Mom and for you? And I appreciate his boldness and humility to kind of talk bluntly with me through that. A caretaker, a retiree. I think many of us, we don't even think through that. Like, I don't, I don't want us to spiritually retire. We've talked about that a lot in our kind of history together. I think there's kind of a weird, especially Central Coast culture that's like, you know what, I've done my time, so I'll just let the young people do the work, and I'll just, I don't know, go to wineries and buy cars. I feel like I accidentally just described someone perfectly that was not my intention. Um, I pray you can retire from your job. Praise the Lord. I pray you can travel, see all of God's creation. But I also hope spiritually, you die with your boots on, because we need you. We need you. We need you. So I pray that we always have that kind of heart. And then again, again, just married life. This is, this is weird too, but I'll just share it because it's here. Um, one of my prayers, I know it's a weird prayer, but one of my prayers, um, <laughs> it's going to sound so weird, but I, I, I pray that I outlive Kristen. Not so I can live free. No, I like I I'll like God. You can take me thirty seconds after. Okay, I don't want to. I don't want to spend another second without her. But a weird prayer of mine is that I can take care of her for her entire life. That's my calling, and I don't know because statistically that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but it's a weird prayer that I have with the Lord. I want to care for her all the days of her life, this side of eternity, and then I give her back to you. And then you take me then. That's my prayer. And it's something I, I, wanna, I, want, I, I think more of us need to think through. If God would be so gracious, old and gray, watching pictures of our great-grandkids together. 
on, you know, whatever Facebook will be. <laughs> and then eternity. Again, what season are you in in this stage of your life? And I think sometimes spiritually, um, if I can be so bold, we're empty nesters acting like children. Or sometimes we're beginning married life and we're frustrated and we're dreaming about what it would be without them. I got too heavy, I know, it's okay. Thank you, Proverbs. What season of life you're in, cherish it. Relish in it. Be faithful and fruitful in the stage of life that you're in. Lastly, and I'm spending way too much time on this, what is your level of wisdom? I'm gonna hit this briefly. I had more notes, but we got more to do. Um, your level of wisdom, this is from um, John Acuff's book, Start, an amazing book. Uh, actually, sorry. It's where I stole this, Road to Awesome. So, <laughs> copy and paste from the book. Uh, he talks about this, kind of in life. There's the learning, the editing, the mastering, and the guiding of anything, whether it's riding a bike or leading a church or starting a job or making a YouTube page. You are learning and you are editing and you are mastering and you are guiding if God would be so good. I think a lot of kind of millennial Gen Z people, um, they'll start and then two weeks later they want to start guiding people. Let me tell you how I did it. You can shut up and listen, right? We are learning, and then editing, and then mastering, and maybe you can tell others how you got there. But we don't, you can't really rush this when it comes to wisdom, when it comes to growth, when it comes, that 10,000 hour rule really does ring true. The older I get, just there's nothing, nothing teaches quite like time, right? So this is kind of the staging of wisdom that we're in, we're learning, and editing, and mastering, and guiding. And I'm not saying young people you can't lead. No, shoot, they maybe lead pastor at 26. Are you kidding me? Right? But I am saying there is wisdom in the room. And I'm very thankful for all generations belonging, beholding, we're coming together, but we need each other. And I think sometimes we can get frustrated with ourselves when you're in the learning season, wondering why you're not mastering it yet. It just takes time. It takes daily obedience. Amen? All right, we got to move on. Uh, number three is this, the why is what they roll with the punches. They plan, they execute on those plans, but they also know that there will be days where you just get a fistful of life, and there's nothing you can do about that, and you can't uh, kind of plan-proof your life where that'll never, ever, ever happen. Things happen. Jobs disintegrate. Right? Sickness happens, death happens, frustrations happen. I planned this, and I prayed, and I thought, and it didn't work, right? Sometimes big things like that, sometimes small things like that. In that little road to awesome, Chris and I thought for our five-year anniversary, we're going to go to New Zealand, visit all of the hobbits. No, 15 years, though. We're going to go see them hobbits for our 15-year anniversary, right? So it gives us three years to save, babe. So uh, the wise roll with the punches. Let me share with you uh, Proverbs 16 at 9. It says this, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Isn't that good? You can plan your way in your heart. This is the plan. This is the direction. But ultimately, it's the Lord that establishes our steps. And I got to let you know, this verse is particularly painful for me because I once had a girl break up with me using Proverbs 16, 9. Literally sat down at a Starbucks in San Diego and said, listen, I know in your heart the plan was to be with me, but the Lord is establishing my steps away from you. We are no longer together. Ouch. It's okay, though, because I married her. Ha, ha! The Lord established them steps. Sorry, she, yeah, I, you, some of you already knew that. Well, look who's back. Yeah, she moved to Springfield, okay? But I married her. Everything's fine. So, yeah. Okay, moving on. So, number four. Last thing is this. The wise take... I'm sorry. I'm out of control today. I apologize. The wise take their next steps. Proverbs 14, 15. I love this. The Proverbs says, the simple, what? Believe anything. Yikes, that's kind of extra painful, isn't it? Just say, eh, just go. we're just gullible, whatever. It's all going to work out. Right? Just let go and let God. The wise believe anything. But the prudent, what? I love this. Give thought to their steps. The wise take their next step. The simple, just, eh, 
It's fine. We don't need to figure it out. We don't need to plan. We don't need to budget. I don't need to think this through. I don't need to spend, I don't need to spend time with God. I don't need to think through how, my, how I've been living, how I've been talking, how my wife, everything we've talked about these last two months together, right? The simple just, eh. But the prudent give thought to their steps. Worship team, you can come on back. I'll close this out. Or rather, you'll close this out with the song. What's best next? And I want to end with this. This will be fun. Uh, I have some strengths. I have some weaknesses. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm particularly thankful for people in this church and in my life that complement uh, kind of my, my, my weaknesses. And then there were certain men that just absolutely put me to shame. Like just, the Lord has just, I'm just like, I don't know how you do anything that you do. And one of those is Mr. Dan Heck. He is amazing. Janie, who's here on staff, uh, she's our operations manager. Dan is her husband. And he just knows, he's just, he's just a dude's dude. He just, he knows how to fix things and make things. And he's humble. And I'm, I'm sure he has bad days, but I've yet to ever see him in one. He's just always got a smile on his face. And he just, he just puts me to shame. I just feel so emasculated because he's so manly to the point where, just for fun, 12 second video. Uh, yesterday, he, they were at the church and he cut down a tree that was dead and we were allowed to cut it, but uh, can we play that quick 12-second video? <laughs> hey! Listen to my dumb, hey! You know, I just was so excited, so... <laughs> so there was a... Uh, a couple months ago, uh, we were all kind of here. I, was, I think one of Dylan's like, first couple weeks here on staff, and Janie was here, and Dan was here, and it was a Wednesday night, and, and we were all kind of working on things for the facility. We were working on kind of weed abatement and mowing stuff, and um, there was some stuff that was broken, and then Janie called Dan, and Dan came, and he, he fixed all the stuff. And so I promise I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> uh, so there was... There was this old mower that he took out and was covered in leaves and it was old and it was it was it just been sitting there for a really, really, really long time. And so he started working on it and he explained, like, this has been sitting here for a long time. So it'll it'll start, but it's gonna take a while. Because it's just been dormant and inactive for so long. I see some of you guys, you're like, oh, I know where he's going with this. And then there was a leaf blower, and it was working, and then it stopped working. And the reason why it stopped working is that it had kind of gotten gunked up and jammed up because there was fuel in it that wasn't the right grade. It had been running, but on a low quality fuel source. Ooh. So he says, so that's why it stopped. That was junk fuel. It needs something better than what you had in it. And then there was a third mower that had broken. I forget why. Dan knows. You already know. I don't. And he got it going. He got it. I'm like, sweet, thank you. And then he went, hold on. And even though it was already working, he opened this kind of side filter and kind of double checked. And he said, okay. And he put it back in. And he said, I just checked that. I just replaced that filter. I just wanted to make sure it was still good. So I can't do any of those things that Dan did for us that Wednesday night. But I was laughing with him yesterday. What I can do is turned into a little sermon illustration for us. So why don't you stand with me, and I want to end with this, because I think those three things are really practical and pertinent to our lives. I think just like that old, old mower, there are areas of our lives that have been dormant, they have been inactive, they have been abandoned, they have been ignored, they have been repressed, suppressed, right? I just don't want to go there. And I want you to know that one, I think more than anything, that's the place that God would want to start. And I also want you to know it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of time. And it might be painful and slow going, but I read this this week, that we will sit and watch a whole season of a show that's a little slow in the beginning because someone promised us, be patient, it gets better. So I want to submit to you that you do the same thing in your walk with the Lord. That it might feel a little awkward, a little slow, but don't worry, it gets better. I think also there are areas in our life that there, it's kind of working, but it's like paper mache and twigs. We're like, it's good, just don't touch it, it's good. 
and you've been kind of, again, just let's just get through this season. Let's just get through this day. Let's just get through this, what, decade. You've been living off poor fuel. And it might have, because sometimes, like, because of pain and trauma and bad habits, like, we just, we just get through things, at least with my walk with, with, with Chris and my wife. There's been seasons where we've had to look at each other and, and essentially say, I understand what led us here, but it's not sustainable. We've got to live off something better. It got us here and thank God we made it through, but it won't serve where I know God wants us to go. We need a better fuel source than just going through the motions. We need a, a longer, more spiritual sense of perseverance than just status quo. And then also, like the filter, he went, I just want to make sure it's good. I would, I would ask all of you, if you're like, I don't know, I think I'm doing okay. One, uh, you're not, I promise you. There's areas where God's like, oh, you think you're good? And the little door opens in your heart, and like, oh, that's right, this room, right? There might be areas you're like, hey, you know what? I think we're doing okay. But I'd ask you to prayerfully this week plan and seek the Lord to say, you know what? Can I get better? Can I just open this back up and spend time with you? I just want to make sure. There's nothing in my heart, nothing in my life that I've said, hey, this is good and we're keeping it from him. Again, whether it's been idle and dormant, whether it's been junk fuel, or it's like, no. We're good, but let's check and let's ask God what he might want from us. Does that make sense? Thank you, Dan. Good sermon. I want us all, as we conclude this series, to say, God, what would you have for me? What season am I in? And help me to be more spiritually and uh, practically intentional about where you've placed me, where you've called me, and what you might have for me in the future. Again, I loved preaching through Proverbs. It was so much fun. I'm so thankful for that. But I really hope this wasn't just a, eh, that summer we went through Proverbs, but may we continually be wise people. Amen. And again, one last time, what does, what does wisdom look like? Life hacks and principles and little hashtags? No. Wisdom is a person. May we walk in wisdom through walking with Jesus. Let me pray over us as we close. God, I pray that your clear grace and truthful voice would speak to us. Show us the areas that we have been living unwise or the areas that we've just been, let's just make it through and it's just been status quo and that is not sustainable. Show us the places that you've called us, whether it's in relationships, in our, in our career, with our finances, in our words, in our friendships, or so many different ways. Show us in the areas where the way we're living, it might like get us through the day, but it's not sustainable. So we need to build something better. And I pray in the areas that we're like, I think we're good, that we, we, we go back to you and say, Lord, what would you have for me here? And maybe it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm in a really good season here. So it's time to guide. It's time to share with others. It's time to serve and say, yeah, I'm really good at this. God's really blessed me. So it's time to help others. Maybe, that, maybe that's the next season. God, we thank you for mercy. We thank you for every day, the promise. You will never leave us or forsake us. What you began, you will complete. So keep us close and help us to take our next step one day at a time. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen.